Dr. Tom Rayner is the president and CEO of Lifeway Christian Resources. If you work for a ministry, you are not going to want to miss the valuable information that he shares with us today. This edition of Shelby Podcast is brought to you by Shelby Next, the next era in Shelby software. Dr. Rayner joins us live via Skype from his office in Nashville. Dr. Rayner, could you briefly tell us about your educational background, your employment experience, and how your past has prepared you for the ministry work that you're doing today? Thanks for having me, and I got to tell you that my my past has really come together at Lifeway, where I am now. Uh, when I went to uh, undergraduate school, I got a finance degree, went straight into the business world for several years. After going into the uh, business world, a call to vocational ministry took me to seminary, where I stayed uh, uh, for about six years to get a couple of degrees. And after that, pastored four churches. After pastoring four churches, then I uh, went to be dean of a seminary for 12 years, and I've been at Lifeway a little bit over 10 years. You have one of the most popular blogs and podcasts on the internet. I love the fun and conversational style you have with your audio podcast. Can you tell us about some of the subjects you've covered recently that got the most audience response? When you begin to ask the question, what type of podcast or what type of blog post have had the most influence, there are really three things or three categories categories that come to mind. Almost anything dealing with guest experience, uh, anything where we're talking about uh, what it's like to come to a church and the experience a guest had. A second category is church conflict, whether it's bullying or whether it's uh, uh, power groups in the church or just, or just the general context of church conflicts. And then the third major area of interest that has uh, uh, really come forth on our both our podcast and the blog is anything to do with the millennial generation, probably around around four out of five of the millennials are not Christians and churches are vitally interested in listening to what we have to say about reaching them. As you know, church attendance in America has been declining for the past several years. Could you briefly go over the five most common obstacles to breaking church attendance barriers and how churches can reverse that trend? One of the most telling statistics is a little over 90%, 90.3% of churches in North America are either declining are they growing at a pace that is slower than the community in which they're located? And there are some commonalities that come out. And one of those, a leadership that's not outwardly focused. If a leader does not have an evangelistic, outwardly focused heart, then you're not going to see a church that is typically outwardly focused. Just basic space issues. And I'm beginning to see more and more of them in the parking lot than I am in uh, worship centers. Uh, failure to get an outside perspective. Uh, when I was a pastor, we would have someone come in every six months who had never been to our church on a Sunday and give us their experience. That helped so much. Another common barrier, staff conflict. When there's staff conflict, you are wasting resources, if you would. Failure to emphasize any kind of prayer, whether it's group or corporate prayer. A church that is not praying is, is a church that will not have long-term sustained growth. Dr. Rayner, you're the author of more than two dozen books. I thought your book, Autopsy of a Deceased Church, was the most eye-opening book I've ever read. It's really a wake-up call to today's church. Dr. Rayner, could you give us the Reader's Digest version of this book and perhaps mention how you became involved with this church in the first place. The thesis behind the whole book is what can we learn from churches that have died? Uh, I have dealt with a number of churches. There's one particular example uh, that I give in the book. They asked me to come be a consultant. I gave them some very hard news. I said, if you do not do the following, then you are very likely to die. They did not uh, hear any of the admonitions. It took them a little bit longer to die than I thought they would, but ultimately they did. One of the leaders called me after they closed the doors and said, I want to talk to you about what's happened in my church. That really became a basis for autopsy. The purpose of an autopsy is to help healthy people stay healthy by learning what caused the death. The purpose of autopsy of a deceased church is to help healthy churches stay healthy by learning how dying churches and those churches that are deceased became sick and ultimately died. I just finished reading The Unexpected Journey and I could not put that book down. I was especially interested in the chapter with Paul, the former Jehovah's Witness, because my wife and I are currently talking with a Jehovah's Witness couple in our home. Dr. Rayner, could you explain how you came up with the idea for the book and then share your favorite story from the 12 interviews? My wife, Nellie Joe and I traveled across the United States and we interviewed uh, a numbers of these people who came from uh, false religions, uh, cults, 
and uh, atheist and agnostic backgrounds to find out what happened in their lives that they became a believer in Christ. One that probably stands out in memory the clearest was Kathy Sharp, a former witch, uh, when we went to Greensboro, North Carolina. And one of the more fascinating parts of it to me was the idea of casting spells. And I wanted to know more, and she frankly said, I'm going to limit my discussion to that because that's what everybody wants to know. And I don't want uh, your readers to get so fascinated with it that they delve in Wiccan or any other witchcraft like I did. Dr. Rayner's new book, Who Moved My Pulpit, is the number one seller in Christian resources on Amazon. The book discusses the big hot button issue right now, change in the church. As we mentioned earlier, attendance continues to decline in America and churches. So what changes are we going to have to make within the church to attract new members and to have a positive impact on the community and the culture? Well, the simple answer to this is the church has to become the church. What has happened most is uh, our churches are not Christian churches, they're churchianity. We go through the motions, we go through the routines, but there's no great commission urgency. One of the biggest needs for churches in change is to move from an inward focus to an outward focus. What I do in in the book of of, uh, Who Moved My Pulpit, I talk about how leaders can really almost step by step go through this change process. My definition of a leader is a leader is someone who is far enough in front that he is clearly identified as the leader, but not so far in front that he is mistaken for the enemy and shot in the rear. Many times uh, we lead too rapidly in churches. This is an idea of leadership at a pace that can be sustained but at the same time have urgency. Dr. Rayner, it was an honor to talk with you today. Thank you for all the important work that you do for ministries around the world. If someone would like to learn more about your blog, your podcast, or Lifeway Christian Resources, what would be the best way for them to do that? Really one place uh, to answer all of the questions, and that would be tomrainer.com, T-H-O-M-R-A-I-N-E-R.com, because that particular site will host all of my blog posts, it would host uh, uh, the podcast, and we pro- try to provide pithy, but poignant and powerful information to help local churches. And that's really who we're all about. We are trying to help churches either become healthy or remain healthy. Thanks to Dr. Tom Rainer for sharing his wisdom and experience with us today. We hope that your ministry prayerfully considers his recommendations. This edition of Shelby Podcast is brought to you by Shelby Next, the next era in Shelby software. Please visit the website that you see there on the screen for more information.